At CU Anschutz, we strive to be a national center for patient care and an international leader in research and education for autoimmune neurology. Our mission is to provide the best care and improve the quality of life for every patient with an autoimmune neurologic disorder through a patient-centered approach that is effectively integrating leading-edge research into the clinical experience. Our research program seeks to advance our understanding of rare neurologic disease through observational studies, translational studies focused on identifying potential biomarkers associated with treatment outcomes, and innovative clinical trials. A foundational component of our research program's success is learning in real time from patients as they experience and recover from symptoms in order to fine tune treatments for improved outcomes. At CU Anschutz, we have a autoimmune perineoplastic and inflammatory neurologic disease registry and biorepository that captures clinical and epidemiology data, as well as patient reported outcomes, blood and CSF samples for biomarker exploration. This information is key for unlocking future discoveries in autoimmune neurologic conditions. At CU Anschutz, we are leading a phase two clinical trial in CAR-T therapy for stiff person syndrome. We are one of the three sites in the country currently enrolling into this trial. If successful, this could potentially lead to the first FDA approved treatment for SPS. There's a new field emerging, this field that we call cellular therapies, which in many ways grew out of traditions of bone marrow transplant, involves using blood cells to help attack and affect diseases, generally working through the immune system. And this field of cellular therapy is very rapidly expanding. There's a whole bunch of growing strategies in, 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 the, in the field. We're gonna to talk today, I think, about CAR T cells in particular. We have the expertise in the field in, in using these cells and taking on all the challenges that come with it. And we're now partnering with all kinds of new groups neurologists, rheumatologists, nephrologists, dermatologists. And so I'm helping to direct the entire operation as these cell therapies expand into other fields and helping to support and work closely with colleagues in other fields in the area. Research in autoimmune neurology and in particular at that translational level is critical for basically three areas that we're often concerned about in neurologic disease. Diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment. And treatment breaks down both into the optimal way of treating a patient to prevent further neurologic injury, but also monitoring a patient's treatment to make sure that they're getting the optimal effect from whatever treatment program that they're placed on. So the purpose of the biobank that we have is to gather cases that Dr. Paquette has been following and in order to have them dissected appropriately as well as stored for future research. It has to be stored in a way that we can keep the DNA, RNA, and proteins intact so we can use newer platforms in order to get more from the tissue than just the, the pathologic diagnosis. And so one of the techniques that we do use is called spatial transcriptomics through 10x Visium. And so with that, we are able to put a, a chip on top of a tissue and with, with a chip of about 5,000 spots, and each spot has a, a million oligonucleotides that's able to really get all the RNA possible in that area. And that's barcoded so we can see the gene expression and where it is being expressed on, this, on the slide. So that's important for us to be able to decipher what's happening with the one type of cell versus another type of cell and the ecosystem that exists within the disease. We have one of the only joint neuroinfectious disease and autoimmune neurology fellowships in the country and potentially anywhere in the world where we train our fellows to learn both about neuroinfectious disease and autoimmune neurology. Because a lot of times when you see these conditions initially up front, you might not realize, could this be an infection? Could this be an overactive immune system? Could it be both? And really our fellowship, which has been going since 2015, so about a decade now, we've been training our fellows in both neuroinfectious disease and autoimmune neurology. As I had mentioned, that neuroinfectious disease and autoimmune neurology really is a spectrum. 
of conditions. And, you know, Dr. Piquet and I work hand in hand because a lot of initial presentations, we don't know if this is potentially an infectious disease or an autoimmune condition. Stiff person syndrome, it was especially important to do this research. We needed to figure out who gets the disease, where they are diagnosed, and how long it takes to diagnose them. What we were able to show through a cohort in Colorado is that stiff person syndrome is much more common than previously thought, at least several times more common, and maybe up to 10 times more common than previously thought. I think one of the key takeaways from this data is when we understand just how common SPS is, and it's still a rare disease, but it's much more common than we thought, once we're able to show that, then we can make the argument to say, hey, we really need to be on the lookout for this disease. We need resources for this disease. And we want our colleagues to know what those presenting symptoms are so that we can get to the disease early and treat it. Our commitment to finding better therapeutics for SPS is unwavering. And our program's importance to Celine Dion and her foundation underscores our dedication. The Celine Dion Foundation's generous gift is crucial for understanding SPS and other autoimmune neurologic diseases. This endowed chair will elevate our program and accelerate research findings, ultimately improving patient care. I am enthusiastic about the expansion of our clinical and translational research program. Thanks for watching this AAN TV feature. Now, an important disclaimer. Content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.